good coverage there. Trey Carson, number 21, in at running back, and Kenny Hill throwing down the sideline, and the pass is caught, juggled, and brought down by Malcolm Kennedy. It was excellent coverage, but Kennedy, with tremendous concentration, picks up 39 yards, and that's a backbreaker in this series. And what an excellent job by Malcolm Kennedy. Defense to hold Texas A&M just to a field goal try as the game begins, and Lambeau is now four for four. Had his hands inside and then let the defender go just in time. Kevin Sumlin would agree with you. Brandon Williams on a little swing. Makes the most of it into S. Ray Carson is the deep man in the eye, and he'll get the carry. Just bulls straight ahead. Went five yards before anybody laid a hand on him, and they really had a lot of beef in front of him. was very good against Texas Tech last week. Played with plenty of time, throws to the sideline, and it is intercepted. Jameis Winston out green, one of the best technician receivers in the country. Sean McGuire getting his first start at quarterback would be a big deal for him. Trey Williams gets a carry. Every, picks up about Williams. Every time Every time 33 run. seconds were run off the clock that last SMU possession. That's a busted play, and Hill will carry. Look at this, Kenny Hill. Still on his feet. Down to the 10-yard line. I think he wanted to hand that ball off. He missed the handoff, and he turns a busted play into a huge play. It sure did look like he wanted to hand it to Trey Williams. Or some power formation, but a lot of times lined up in the backfield. Williams again turns the corner inside the five. Touchdown. Trey Williams scores the Aggie touchdown. And considering how bad SMU has been trying to score, fans would have rather seen them try 4-12. Number 25, K.C. Lenchi, getting a chance to run the ball. And as you pointed out earlier, he has always had good defensive clubs here. Under pressure, the first sack of the ball game. And that was Alonzo Williams. Castle flushed out of the pocket, and down he goes. It's Sean Washington getting his first action of the season who he was the leading returning sacker from last year but he broke his collarbone during training camp he's just playing the spy nice job Washington a big inches and they go out of the shotgun anyway of course Hill throws short Kennedy makes another catch Kennedy still on his feet no it's not it's a booyo and a booyo 19 instead of 84 Takes it in for the score, and pending the extra point, it'll be 17 to nothing. Eight or ten days for this offensive line. A lot more physical in practice. Castle, if you double pump, you're in a lot of trouble. Quaylen Cunningham gets the third sack for Texas A&M. But it was right on the line of whether it was catchable or not, so probably the right call. Hill on a little roll, throws back against the green, uh, against the green, complete to Seals Jones. What a big target he is at 6-5. They run the option. Trey Williams walks in. And the SMU defense, I think, has run out of gas. I don't know, but Ruffin McNeil has done a heck of a job. He deserved that opportunity, and he's making the most of it. Trey Williams to midfield for a first down. Very good head coaches that will want this opportunity, SMU. Williams on a little toss. Big seam off the right side. 30 inside the 20. Trey Williams out of Spring, Texas for 32 yards. Jonathan. It really did get very hot. I can't imagine. Got to be above 100 on that field. Williams first straight up the middle. Three rushing touchdowns. And they are just having their way. A little more comfortable in what he's calling. Straight up the middle. Pope's still on his feet. Fights inside the 20. And I want to say something nice about the offense. Just inside 30 yards. And he knocks it through. Officially, it's 29. 
And SMU caps its longest offensive drive of the season. The onside. Trey Williams. The pooch. The pooch down the sideline. They've got a got shot it. at it, and they've got it. Tom Mason said, why not? Fourth and three. They'll be going for it. Here comes pressure. Christich double pumps, throws too high, incomplete, and they'll turn it over yeah. on down. On protection. Good oh, job, water. guys. So AM takes over with 34 seconds to go in the half. And Kenny Hill floats one down the sideline. This one is going to go for a touchdown of 70 yards to Josh Reynolds after these messages. In Scottsdale, Arizona, not somewhere that Kevin Sumlin likely would have gone unless there was want from the player or the national brand for AM wasn't as hot as it is. Allen to the sideline with this, a leaping catch, the 45-yard line. Boone Niederhofer. Up and go to end the half of the touchdown. I thought that might have been a little bit of stepping on the gas, frankly, by Kevin Sumlin. But I agree, in this scenario, nice job having to switch over to corner in the senior year. Lambeau will try from 50. Plenty of leg. He is perfect on the day. And raises it to 40. Christich under pressure. And big number 96, Jay Arnold. Missed him the first time. Came back, got him the second time. That is the seventh sack. In full pads and practice and hitting. We'll see if it improves over the year. Christich hangs in the pocket, has a receiver wide open. It's Thompson. Split the defenders and a big Very game. Explosive. Rademacher will try from 44 yards out. And it's no That's good. pretty good. Gonzalez to midfield. Four or five conferences. To Buyo makes the first man miss, makes another man miss. Cuts back at the 30, 20, 10 touchdown. Jeremy Tabuyo, 50. Yards. Yeah, but but with those non con with that level of non conference I think it gives you a chance to be in the conversation for the top four at the end of the season in a way that just didn't exist. I'll say I think three other undefeated teams and a couple of teams with one loss. That is going to be a very difficult argument on their side. But you look at the SEC, when they get in big games, they win. Mm -hmm. Especially when they're playing anybody else. And I think in that scenario, with two losses, I think an SEC team probably goes over a lot of other conferences. Gonzalez backpedals and has clear sailing up the middle. Takes it across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. 28-yard return team because they didn't have their starting quarterback be now considered one of the best four teams in the country. I think they would. And and we talked to Bill Hancock, who runs the college football playoffs, over 80 yards against Lamar and was dead tired at the end of that game. Gonzalez, really quick, makes another couple of great cuts and goes inside the 10. That's the faster than anybody else is out there. White looks to his direction, or look, and Gonzalez out of bounds as Allen. Gonzalez should be able to get his right foot down. Need to know that you're close. You watch NFL receivers do it all the time. They do that little tap. So they'll go with a field goal from Lambeau. And Texas A&M raises the ante to 51 to three. Right, that 12th man. Doral trying to get outside. Nothing doing. Josh Walker, a backup inside linebacker, made that stop along with Daryl Jackson, who's made a couple of plays. Great defense. at the other positions, and the guy's gritty and a gamer and throws on time and accurate. Yeah, if he's got those qualities and then happens to have an arm like Dan Marino, so much the better. It's Niederhofer again, and every time Niederhofer touches the ball, he gets positive yardage. That's close. Yeah. White off the left side breaks a tackle inside the 20 breaks another tackle inside the 10 seven every week is being challenged in practice if you don't have that 
Allen to White on the option, and White is in for a touchdown. But if you don't have that level of competition, and clearly A&M does, they're, they're all...